Do you often feel that your renders are pretty cool, but they just don't come out the way you intended? No problem, we are going to fix that right now. And in this video, you'll learn the easiest way to bring your renders to the next level. When you render at first, it's not going to come out in the quality that you would like it to be. But that's not a problem, because we have different programs to solve different problems. We have DaVinci Resolve for the compositing, and in this case, we are going to do the easiest version, so we are just going to color grade one image. When we speak of realism, we are not actually speaking about the real deal. We are not talking about our eyes. We are talking about photorealism. And you have to keep that in mind, that we are not actually trying to make things look real, we are trying to make it look like it was shot with an actual camera. And that is the important keynote to take away from this, is that you are not actually trying to emulate reality, you are trying to emulate reality as it has been filmed through a camera. In other words, you make it look more real by adding imperfections and camera specific phenomena. So I hope you've got a beautiful render yourself and let's hop into DaVinci Resolve. I am going to address the free version first and foremost and in the end I will also tell you what you can do with the paid version which I've got myself. All right, on to the actual first note. We are going to start looking at the ranges of our colors and we can do that in Parade. Parade actually shows us different ranges of colors in the lift, gamma and gain. And this is going to be very easy because we have these very handy sliders on the left side. So what I like to do is change the overall brightness and darkness of the image in general and I use Parade as a visual guide. So now I'm going to adjust the color wheels of the lift, gamma and gain in order to achieve a certain look. We're going to make it brighter where it needs to be brighter. We're going to make it darker where it needs to be darker. Very simple, you can do this by eye, but don't go overboard. Because going overboard in things color grading is not a good idea. On to the next note, let's do some saturation. Everybody loves saturation. Adding saturation can be achieved in multiple different ways. You can adjust this slider in the bottom left corner. But what you can also do, which is my favorite method right now, is to go over to this icon right here, boost up the R, G and B, and then we are going to go over to our output and adjust the output so that we can control how much of it we want or not. And what I do in this case is I just keep looking at the screen to see what I like. And once I've found what I like, I dial it down just a little bit because I tend to go a little bit overboard with saturation as it really pops out into your eyes and is, there's a reason why thumbnails are made so saturated to grab your attention. And well, in this case, we don't want that. We just want a good render. So let's add some contrast because without contrast, your video looks boring and bland. Now, go over to this node and we have this very handy contrast slider and you can accompany it with the pivot as well, which retains some of your highlights. In your renders, you want to have depth. There's a reason why cinematographers try to create depth. Cameras often portray these images in 2D, which is what it is, because it's just a screen and everything is layered on top of each other. So cinematographers go to great lengths in order to add some depth to their scene. Often you'll see them filming through a doorpost in order to make something look visually beautiful, or there's something put in the foreground so that you can have a cool bokeh foreground or a bokeh background because it also adds depth. That's why it looks so nice. But this is the reason why they do that because it adds this visual feeling that everything is in 3D. Well, actually it's just 2D, which is pretty weird because we are trying to take the 3D-ness out of our renders in order to make it fit into the 2D. But at the same time, we have to keep in mind that you want to have the depth. Contrast helps with depth because when you have shadows, it actually creates some visually interesting stuff. You can imagine that shooting a dialogue scene against a flat wall is going to be very boring and not very visually interesting. So what you want to do is create depth. You want to have darker and lighter spots, separation. You want to try to incorporate this into your scene. And, but this is how important lighting is. I'm going to show you right now real quick. Let's turn this off. Turn this off. All right, so I don't know if you can still see me. Maybe this lighting is very flattering to you. Definitely not. Well, it might be case specific, but in this case, I don't want to scare you away. I'm trying to give a tutorial here. So as you can see, not having a proper lighting setup can truly bore out your scene. In this case, we did it with actual footage, with actual lighting in an actual place. 
but it's not very hard to imagine that this works for your Blender renders as well. So we've done the parade, we have done our saturation, and we have done our contrast. And your image is probably starting to look pretty good already, but we're way from done. One thing that's very important in digital rendering is sharpening. Because when you use noise reduction in Blender, it's starting to look all smudged out. You're losing some pixel detail there. And well, you can actually try and bring it back artificially afterwards. So that's what we're going to do. We are going to add a note by pressing Alt S and then adding the sharpen note to it. And once you've got the sharpen note, we can play around with the values and try to turn it into something visually pleasing. Next up is the lens flare. If there's anything that adds to your scene, especially a 3D scene, it's a lens flare. Why? Because a lens flare actually blends some of the light that it emits over the entirety of your image. And it just looks real smooth, especially in 3D renders, but also in actual camera footage sometimes. And of course you want to have the flaring in your lens, because then it sells the idea more that you have filmed it with an actual camera. Down to the last two notes, stick with me, we're almost there. You are going to have a fine looking render at the end of this. The next part is glow. You almost always want to add some glow because glow is just such a man you peak. So I add it to almost every piece of footage I got because I just love the glow. I love glow. But just don't overdo it. I tend to overdo it and I actually restrain myself like I did before. So first I look at the footage and I just play with the slider blindly until I see something that I like. And once I see something that I like, I dial it down just a little bit to be sure. And the last note in the free version is going to be a vignette. Magnificento. Because a vignette makes sure that there's more center focus instead of the entire image. So what we are going to do is add an ellipse. And once we've got the ellipse, we can just darken the edges. You have to invert the mask. It's not a great deal. I'll show you right now. But of course, using a vignette is entirely optional and up to you, as with all notes that I've just used. I hope this was a useful tutorial and that your render looks way better right now. I've only touched upon the surface, but I'm sure it has really enhanced your render overall. If this helped you out, subscribe and uh, maybe I can do some more of these kind of videos in the future. So if you've got the studio version of DaVinci Resolve, you can go over to this tab right here, press frames and set five. You can also click on better, which is better. And then you're going to pull this up all the way to seven. You can disconnect this chain link by pressing this chain. And then you turn the Luma to 5.8. We're going to make a next note and we're going to call it parade because we are going to use the parade as a visual aid in doing this. We are going over to this tab and here you've got the red. You can see all the colors. Over here we've got different wheels, the lift, gamma and gain. And we can use them to manipulate our image. Next note, we want to have some saturation because everybody loves saturation. The best way to add saturation is to go over here and bring the sliders to their maximum. Once you've done that, you can go over to this tab and go to the key output. And when you mess with the gain, you can see it has influence on your image. We are going to make the next note, which is a contrast note. Over here we've got two sliders, the contrast slider and the pivot slider. The next note is going to be a sharpen. We can find it right here. Play around with the sharpness and find something you like. The next note is going to be a lens flare. Change it to MIRI 2.8 something and drag it to the position that you like. You can also change the way that the lens flare is placed in the camera. Global brightness is important as well. You should always add glow, so we're going to add glow. This is glow. Now we can change the shine threshold and find something that we like. You can also change the spread and it will spread it out. Once you go down, you got the global blend and you can blend it and make sure not to go overboard with this. The final notes also for the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. It's going to be a film grain. We can use the film grain to emulate a specific camera phenomenon. I like to put it to 60 mm 500T and then change the gain strength. You have to zoom in to see something happening. And maybe because of the compression on YouTube, you cannot see anything at all. There you go. And this is the before and after.